What's up guys, JTales here with another video, and this video is going to be very different from my usual. I actually want to talk about the robust movement system in Smash Ultimate, and I want to teach you guys how to actually practice your movement and become better and more comfortable in the game engine. This is something that a lot of players don't talk about, and it's a very important concept to understand, especially for players who are new to the Smash series and maybe haven't fully yet understood how to control their character in their space. I'm going to teach you what exactly to practice on your own free time and the importance of this, why you should do it and how exactly to do it. So let's get started. You'll notice that a lot of new players when they play Smash, they have a tendency to roll, right? They have a tendency to use roll as a primary form of movement because it feels comfortable to them, it's, you know, it's a big movement, it feels safe, right? But rolling is actually, it's always been bad in every Smash game. Um, it's a very situational option, but in Smash Ultimate, rolling is probably the worst um, that it's ever been. Because every time you roll, you actually gain an, um, an increase in the recovery frames for your roll. If you notice how slow Palutena is now after every roll, um, the count the count has been increased. I don't have the exact numbers for you right now, but I just want to demonstrate that the more often you roll, the slower it gets, and it becomes a worse option, especially when used in succession. So, what should you be doing instead of rolling? Well. The movement in this game is very robust. Dashing has, um, you know, we have a dash dance mechanic, we have fox trotting, and we have uh, walking, and then just a normal dash that you can let follow through its entirety, right? So, what should you be doing instead, right? You're stuck in shield, you're feeling scared and pressured. Jumping out of your shield is always a very good option because it lets you get away and it's a non-committal uh, thing to do. Oh, the buffering is affecting me there. But um, you want to make sure you let go of shield uh, when you get into the air, otherwise it will buffer a roll when you land. And that's something that I'm still adjusting to, but jumping out of your shield is always uh, a solid option if you're trying to avoid trouble. Um, obviously, kind of just avoiding attacks with movement in general is very, very good as well. So I do want to talk about the, the various types of movement. Walking is very important to get used to and turning around. This is something that new players seldom do or seldom practice. And it's a very uh, distinct movement on the analog stick that allows you to, right? Like if I was using dashes, I can't properly space my F smash, right? If I'm dashing, I can't get the tip of that spacing. Um, which is very important. It's important to space at max range on most of your moves because then you're susceptible to getting punished or shield grabbed. Whereas if you're at max range, you're less likely to get punished for more high commitment options. So walking and turning around allows you to adjust your spacing more, um, more precisely than rolling would. It's such a big unit of, of distance. And it doesn't allow you to space uh, the way that you would need to, right? So if I just want to, right, space with just a tip um, on this jab, I would walk. Whereas dashing would put me too close and a roll would either put me behind or once again too close. So walking is important for that reason. Um, fox, well, fox trotting is a way to... Uh, extend your dash, and since you can do anything out of dash at this point, uh, fox trotting and just initial dashing are very good in this game because you can get any tilts that you want out of your dash. Um, so that's another reason why rolling is worse in this game is because dashing is just so much better. Um, and then fox trotting is a way to kind of mix up your approach so that your opponent doesn't know when you'll be approaching, and you can kind of just, you know bait them and scare them into something, especially with inkling, it, this is really good. So Foxtrot and then you come in with a dash attack, right? Foxtrot and then you come in with a grab 
and they, they don't know exactly when you're going to approach. So foxtrotting is used is used as a mix-up. It's used to bait people to get get afraid and then act before they should. Um, and it's just you know it's an intimidation technique. It, I'm not saying this is the be all end all, but foxtrotting, uh, sorry, dash dancing has its uses. Now, the most important part of this video that I want to talk about is your jumping and your aerials. Um, a lot of people um, have been reaching out to me for lessons. Thank you so much for that, by the way. Um, I'm really excited to work with you guys and the influx of inquiries has been great. For those people who are interested in lessons, please email me at jtailstv at gmail.com and we can set something up. Um, but most people who come to me for lessons are new players and they do not know how to short hop. They end up doing full hops which is actually worse for you because your opponent can see you coming when you're full. When you're coming from up here, they have more time to shield or react to your distance. Whereas if you're coming from this low, it's a lot faster to get your attack off, right? And you can uh, do various different combos off of a short hop aerial than you would with a full hop aerial. You see how long that takes? It just takes so much longer to reach the ground, meaning your movements are more telegraphed that way. So, I want to talk to you guys how I learned how to move um, in Smash games and what it took and how you can do the same thing. So the first thing that I would recommend you do is learn the difference between a short hop, if you notice me short hopping here, and a full hop which I know you guys know the difference and the execution might be throwing you off, um, but you should be able to get 30 short hops in a row uh, with, an, I wanna say a 95% success rate, maybe 98% success rate, whenever you want it. You should be able to do this without looking. I'm not looking at the screen right now and I'm still getting my, my short hops. You should be able to do this with your eyes closed because this is a fundamental mechanic of Smash. So. That means I, I'm gonna want, and the way that you do a short hop is just tapping the jump button for less than three frames. If you hold the jump button for a longer period of time, you're going to get a full hop. And that's, you know, not an optimal form of movement. So, uh, you basically just want to practice. Uh, tapping the jump button lightly and I know there's the shortcut too where you buffer uh, holding jump and A in a direction and you get a rising aerial but we're gonna talk about why that's not good to do um, in just a moment. Um, so after you've done your, your 30 short hops and you're comfortable with this movement I'm gonna want you to start doing short hop fast falls. You see how much faster this is? So fast falling allows you to uh, move your momentum after you've reached the apex of your jump down and you can it's not a cancel but it gets you down to the ground faster you can do this after full hops as well but it's better off of short hops because it's just faster and it's more um dynamic now after you get comfortable with short hop fast falls i'm then gonna want you to practice short hop fast fall aerials so that you can uh, get combos down so you can use the c-stick for aerials if you're more comfortable with that. Um, do note that the C-Stick moves you forward every time you do an aerial. If you see Palutena's position, she's actually getting closer every aerial with the C-Stick. I'm not hitting the joystick at all, if you notice. And we're already closer to Pichu. But if you use A, you can kind of control yourself a little bit better, and you don't have to move forward if you don't want. So hopefully this is a good um, showing with my with the hand cam. Um, so then I'm gonna want you to do short hop fast fall aerials. And this is a falling forward air, right? Now there's also such a thing as a rising forward air, but the problem with that is that I'm fighting Pichu and Pichu's very short. So if I do a rising forward air, I'm gonna miss 100% of the time. If I wanna hit Pichu, I have to do a short hop falling forward air because he's on the ground but if I'm doing a rising forward air that's gonna miss or same thing if your opponent's ducking your aerial is most likely gonna miss so you have to practice both 
short hop falling aerials and short hop rising aerials uh, just to get comfortable with the movement and pair them with fast falling as well so you don't spend too long in the air and get punished. So now what I'm going to want you to do is start dashing and short hopping to get used to that movement so that you can move while also escaping situations and short hopping around. So all these drills, I'm going to want you to do 30 in a row. And if you mess up once, I'm going to want you to restart that counter until you get 30 in a row. And if you do this every day, after about a month, you'll start feeling like it's second nature and you're very less likely to mess up uh, your aerials and your movement. So once you get more comfortable with dashing short hops, I'm going to then want you to do dashing short hop aerials just so that you can get comfortable with moving around and attacking. And then same thing with rising. Now rising uh, short hop rising aerials are meant to challenge opponents that are either coming from above you or that are also doing a short hop uh, aerial and you're beating them out with your own. Um, or it's also good against big characters because they're tall so you'll probably hit them with these rising attacks. But for the most part, um, you're going to want to do falling aerials to hit small characters and to try and uh, punish them. But um, yeah, and then you can start pairing short hops with uh, foxtrots and dash dances. And it just really makes your movement a lot more dynamic and and uh, just more accessible. And you're going to be able to do... So the, the reason that this is important is that a lot of characters have combos out of like you know, short hop fast fall aerials and there are certain ways that characters need to be played in order to be effective and if you can't perform these movements then it's a lot, you know, you have uh, an uphill battle if there's a certain character that you want to play but they require short hop, you know, falling aerials and you just, you're unable to perform them then it's just like, okay, well you're not using their toolkit effectively and it's holding you back. So I just wanted to put this video out to kind of help people learn what they should be practicing and how to do it. Just spend, you know, 10, 15 minutes in training mode with these motions every day. You can even do it while watching Netflix or YouTube or whatever and just kind of have this running in the background. Um, it also helps if you, you load up your game and load up this video while you're practicing and try to get your short hops to look as fast as mine. Um, while, while you're starting, it your, your short hops are going to look a lot more like this because you're not used to how fast the game is going to be responding to your button presses. Um, but as you get more comfortable, you're going to get um, a lot faster with short hop fast falls and you're going to be able to move back and forth and as soon as you touch the ground, you're already, you're already jumping again and then you're going to just be applying a lot of pressure and people aren't gonna really know how to deal with it um, depending on what level you're at so yeah I mean that's pretty much it uh, movement is very important and the movement in Smash Ultimate really allows you to do a lot I will be making tutorials on roaring your aerials and be reversing um, in probably this week actually but I just really wanted to put this guide out because it's been a big question that I've been getting and you know, I think that it's important to address in this game. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. And consider subscribing to the channel for more tutorials. That's pretty much it, guys. I will see you all next time. Later.